how about the lie about being born that way? You know, we don't often hear that much anymore yeah. because of the transgender movement, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to say, hey, we're born this way. Now they say that you can go to bed as a man and wake up as a woman. So the Bible's view on love and tolerance isn't going to change because these are principles built upon truth. Today, most people are unable to, most Christians are unable to stand up for the truth simply because if they do, they might fall out politically or culturally and they might lose out being popular or unable to have friends and social media might cancel them. And so in order for them to continually do or feel good within themselves, they tend to be lukewarm or conform with societal and, and, and social norms, which the Bible disagrees with because the Bible instructs us, commands us, to stand for the truth because Jesus is the truth. If you are a Christian who for some reason are unable to stand up for the truth uh, because of the kind of society you find yourself in and for that reason you've become super lukewarm, I know this video has a lesson or two that will go a long way to help you. Let's watch. Satan has masterfully used the gospel against us. What do you mean by that? Well, he here's the thing we're called to go and love the world. And that's supposed to be the greatest tool and the greatest asset that we have, that we get to go and love the world. But now um, the message has been packaged like we're unloving if we don't celebrate the party of LGBTQ. And so we're perceived as unloving. And so now you have people, if they're not biblically trained, what they start feeling is, well, golly, I don't want, I, I know I'm supposed to love you. And I guess if um, I, I'll celebrate you then and, and, you know, and I'll affirm this because I want you to feel loved. And we're believing a lie uh, because we're, and what's happening is we're having to get into conversations that aren't even about the real story. I've been a Christian for over 30 years. I cannot think of a single Christian in all my time being Christian that it would say, well, oh, man, we just, we need, we need to be unloving to the homosexual community. If anything, and I'm not saying there hasn't been Fred Phelps types, mm -hmm. but if anything, Christians bend over backwards mm. to show that their love to the point that some will compromise the truth and fail to love people with the truth of God's word because they don't want to offend because the narrative, like it's like anytime we get in a conversation, anytime we talk about this, it's like we have to exhaustively say, now I'm not trying to be unloving. I'm not trying to be unloving because people have been programmed to think if you don't celebrate, you're unloving. But the fact of the matter is that's not true. Like would the Muslim say I'm unloving because I believe that Jesus is the son of God, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the second person, the Trinity, uh, why do, you don't have to defend that in any other area. Right. So, but when it comes to like a Buddhist or a Hindu, the Hindu wouldn't say, Oh, you know what? You're unloving because you won't celebrate Hinduism or you're unloving because you believe Jesus is the only way. But when it comes to this area, this is the narrative that's so pushed upon us, but it cuts right at, the heart of it. And you think about like the, the parade at the Olympics that went down. I mean, you have uh, the, like the, the symbol of the antichrist riding in on a white horse with a crown. You have the God of uh, uh, the ancient God of Dionysus of orgies and drunkenness. that's being celebrated. I mean, I think all the stuff in the culture, it's so highly sexualized, Frank. And then in the name of we're not love, we're not loving unless we jump in and celebrate this. It's just an unfair narrative. Well, nobody ever defines what love means. Love does not mean approval. Exactly. You know, as Paul says in Romans, sorry, in 1 Corinthians 13, that love always protects, that love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but love rejoices in the truth and love always perseveres. Love doesn't mean approval. The folks who are saying, if you, if you love me, you'd approve of me, are the same people who won't approve of you. Right. That's right. So yeah, exactly. love doesn't mean approval. Love means seeking what's best in God's sight for the other person. And if we're going to love people, we can't approve of the sin that they want to commit. We can't approve of it because it's not loving to them. It's not helping them. We're enabling them to stay in their sin and maybe to stay eternally separated from God. That's not loving. So I think we need to be really clear as to what love is if we're going to be effective with people uh, and say, I couldn't hate you more by hiding the truth. Yeah.
especially if it has eternal consequences, and we know it does. For God so loved that he gave. Now that give over there is a sacrificial kind of giving. Love demands we sacrifice ourselves for one another and not watch people go into the ditch simply because we might be accused of being intolerant. If God gave out a son, so we today, our sins wouldn't be imputed on us, but rather on Christ and his righteousness into our account, then it is expected of us that we do same for our neighbors. But this ideology of conforming with societal norms so we become cool or accepted as getting out of hand and Christians need to stand up for it because love is actually built upon truth. And so if you claim you follow Christ, who is the only way, truth and life, then you will stand up for what is true. Love seeks for the best. You seek for the betterment of each other. And so if we are going to live in a society where we would care for each other, then I think it is right for me to tell you that the Bible goes against what you are doing. And in order for you to be saved, this this is what you are going to be doing, right? You are going to be denying yourself of this. And I don't think it would be intolerant for me to tell you you are wrong, as the society or culture today is depicting. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 states, Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Now, that word iniquity used there in Greek is adikia, which is a deed that violates law and justice. And so within this context, that law and justice is going to be the law and justice of God. And so there are laws in the Christendom that we go by when it comes to love and every other subject. And for us to conform with societal norms wouldn't be us obeying the laws of God. I know you might have friends that you love so much such that you are unable to tell them what is truth and what is, um, what is, what is false. But if you truly seek out for the betterment of their lives, I think you as one who has studied the Bible to a certain point and know the ordinances of God should be able to communicate that to them. But if you are not a biblical person, for some reason you profess to be a Christian or proclaim Jesus is Lord. But if for some reason, if you happen not to know anything biblically, well, this is what the Bible speaks concerning love. I know there are so many Christians around who know nothing in the Bible and it's not normal. You have to study the Bible else you might be brainwashed by what society is preaching. Okay. If you love this video, kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share for more content like this. Peace out.